Hey guys, Raymond with Bob here with another cool review. So Peckron sent me this. This is a sponsor review now. Peckron sent me this. This is the new E600 LFP. Dear, have you seen this one online yet? No. You haven't seen this one? Okay, no. I haven't either. Um, we don't need scissors. Let's use the trusty dusty knife. All, All right. I know is it's a bunch of numbers. Woo! It's a bunch of numbers from Peckron. Yay. Okay. So are, are, are you still happy with the E2000 LFP, dear? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good one? Yeah. Now, okay. If if uh, if my memory serves me correctly, the one thing that I really really enjoy with Peckron, other than the customer service I got, was pretty good, guys. I can't complain. Okay, um, see all this? It's a box. No, no, but look at. Can you see all this? It's a box. It's like a box inside a box inside oh. a box, guys. They really package stuff well. Like I have to give that to them. I see a carrying case. Yep. So we have another carrying case. Okay. So this is going to be our number four. Woo! carrying case so oh man is that heavy feel that one's there wow oh, there's a lot of stuff in there okay wow. so here's the uh this is all the accessories these are very nice little pouches and uh, they do have these kind of watershed slash kind of waterproofy uh zippers on them they're very very uh, uh durable they're nice this is the fourth one we have now um so we're going to take the power station on yeah they're, they're shipping guys it's really really uh exciting yeah. all right there's that thank you and then here it is babe this is the oh it's much smaller than a box oh it's heavy Aww. wow okay take the box dear okay all right as i said guys this is a a sponsor review they were nice enough to send us one of these and i was really happy to get it this literally looks like a baby version of the e2000 lfp um now dear bring your favorite one over here um, she has a system that she will not let me get rid of, and no. possibly this system might allow no. us to get rid of this other one. No. Um, this is the Mylon 614 oh, watt hours. Uh, yeah, see the best friends now. See? Yeah. Oh, look at babe. Look at. Ooh, ooh, there's baby, a screen baby. peely. Oh, oh. You, wait, you gotta have oh. music. Wait, I can't get it. It's got a little tap. Wait, wait. Shh. No, you gotta do it for the, this thing, you know, it's like the, it's aesthetically pleasing, so you gotta... Okay, hey. so, um, the, 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 guys, <laughs> craziness. Okay, so that's basically uh, the little cover that goes over the screen. She has a thing for these. I don't know. There's, like, channels dedicated to this stuff, guys. It's so satisfying. weird. Satisfying. Okay, so that's very satisfying, guys. I don't care. She gets to rip them off, and, you know, happy wife, happy life, so everybody's happy. Okay. Satisfying. <laughs> okay, so this is the Mylon 600. Um, she really, really enjoys this. She will not let me get rid of it. Um, we don't use it much as you can see it's kind of dusty uh, it's a 640 uh, watt hour lithium-ion batteries but as times change technology changes guys so we're gonna get rid of this one just for a time being dear don't cry don't run away no. okay that she really likes this however if I hold this now this is a lot heavier a lot like it's it's okay. it's only about 20 pounds guys but it's very surprisingly uh, feeling heavier but now if I go like this and let her Get a good look at it it's so cute. okay so she's falling in love with this one so maybe i can get rid of the mylon who knows maybe i have a giveaway someday um this is basically a 614 uh watt hour 600 uh well actually 1200 rated ac guys there's 1200 uh, watts this thing can put out and anytime that you have an inverter that's bigger than the battery the efficiency is going to fall down because you're overpowering the battery a little bit but that's okay because a little box like this guys a little dinky little thing like this can charge and power uh, 1200 watts that's literally almost everything that you would need for camping um probably let's see there the air fryer is a little bit too much for that um and i remember that's 12 i think that's i think i gotta research it i think the 1200 watts is what it lets out that's not the surge guys now pecron doesn't have a very good history with the surge uh the e2000 lfp is uh 2000 watts rated and it says 4000 surge but man it's like that that's it and then yeah, it pops it did you, it yeah once you get over 2000 if you remember the review we did with the uh was that the coffee maker thing yeah the keurig yep and then it it, it popped so i'm i didn't see it check out the video right now yeah yeah but, we're done. but i have to be honest guys this is a really really cool cute little device if you guys ever seen blue eddie's uh eb3a it's very similar to that um i don't know if they have do they have a that they have a handle on there don't they i don't know it has a nice if you want to feel it babe, it has a nice rubber grip on it it uh Oh yeah. Then I pick it up once. 
No. Right? Right? Well, <laughs> let's see. Let's give, give it a give, like, give it a hell. Okay. So, it's definitely heavier, guys. And that's obviously because the lithium-ion batteries is pound for pound, power for power. The uh, iron phosphate batteries are heavier than the lithium. However, 3,500 cycles on this little thing. 3,500 cycles, which means you'll have this for the next 10 years if you cycle this thing once a day for the next 10 years. I guarantee you, I don't care who you are, I guarantee you that in the next five or six years, you will probably buy a new system or extend a system, expand it, because this industry is literally exploding with power stations. Every time you turn around, there's new ones. Like, I, so far, what do you think about cosmetics? It looks exactly like the big one, right? I noticed the difference, but... Okay, go ahead. Well, what do you I, notice this different? I, I? Yeah, absolutely. Come um, on. So like, yeah, I'm let's like, turn it on, and then we can see it, okay? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, look at all that fanciness. Oh, the cat's here. Okay. Oh, we're really bobcat. Bob cat found the boxes. <laughs> um... Yep, she's inside the boxes. Okay. Um, so the big difference I noticed that like these and yep. like these aren't covered on like the, how like it is on the big. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, fair enough. So like like this, you know. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So guys, right away, uh, Mrs. Rambling Bob noticed that the watershed covers, not waterproof, but the watershed covers are not here. Um, some people like those, and some people hate them. Uh, I, I remember watching a, a video from uh, Will Powell, and uh, he I think he was doing either the Blue Eddy or the EcoFlow. I can't remember which one. And he literally goes and rips them off and goes, I hate these stupid things. And he just threw them on a, you know, in the garbage. Um, I, I like them, I think. I like that they keep dust and dirt and like, yep, water yep. out. Like, not all the way, obviously, but it keeps it a lot cleaner. I agree. Better connection. Now, guys, you, if if, uh, if you remember a long time ago, maybe, maybe I didn't do the video. Uh, mm -hmm. but, Miss Rambling Bob, you remember this? Uh, you can buy these little covers, right? <laughs> yeah. You yep, can buy the little plastic side. covers if that's what you want. You know, I don't know if uh, if they they took it out of there just for cosmetics or whatever. I, you know, I do like them. It always looks like these are screaming, doesn't it? That's why. Okay, so <laughs> it looks the like they're yelling. Here's at you. the thing. Okay. I noticed that they didn't have the covers because I was staring at it and I was going what the whole yeah. time, and I'm now, like, how it, come I don't remember with the other one? And well, then I remember. Can I have the Mylon ones? I want to. I want to show you something okay. real quick again, guys. Miss Ramblin's got to run over there and get the Mylon. That's your favorite one. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to tire her out so she doesn't want to carry it back and forth so she'll keep this one because I like this one better. Lithium iron no, phosphate. I can carry this one. So, Dark. Yeah. Okay, so she can carry this one. Yeah. So, guys, it's a lot, a lot lighter. But notice the, the one thing that I didn't like with this model, guys. Hopefully, they're both on video. Okay, good. Upside so, down. Yes, yeah, it's, it's upside down, guys. I say what upside no, down? No offense to any company. This is a dumb idea. I, I, I don't like that because, like, here, say say you had one of these, okay? This is a kilowatt meter. Every single person in this industry or that's a fan of this industry or has this stuff should have one of these, period. There's links all over this, uh, this channel for these things. And... Um, you know, you can test your load before you wreck your box. So, you know, you don't want to overpower your box, you know, period. So, so you check yourself before you wreck yourself. You check yourself before you wreck yourself. I remember that's yeah. an old fabric. Okay, so um, you, you basically put it in a little unhappy face. And notice this has the unhappy face too, but it's upside down. Yeah. So when you plug this in, now notice you obviously cover all of the buttons for the most part, right? But you really don't need the meter screen if you have this, because you can follow the watt hours on yeah. here. But on this one, watch this, guys. Watch what happens. See, and the screen is very small. See how tiny that screen is? You can barely see it. It's on. Yay. So notice if I put it in here, it doesn't go in, right? You have to put it like this, guys. What a dumb... What, what, I don't know. I, I, like, I don't want to be mean. What a dumb idea, guys. I, I think it's really a dumb idea. So everything that you have uh, to hook this up, it's upside down, you know? And, and some old people did that, and I don't know why they did that, where... The, uh, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the larger side is on the right rather than the left. I mean, everything is just backwards. So look at this. You, you can't set this down. If you try to set it down, you'll break that, right? So maybe if we kept them both here and ran them like that, you could run this upside down. But okay, so we're going to put this one aside. Okay, and now we're going to go back to the, the review that we're all here to see. Um, well, this is actually the box uh, unboxing. We're not going to do the review yet. This is just the first part of the video. But um, very simplistic box, guys. Very simplistic. Very, very. It, it's it's um, it's light heavy. It's it's very. It's deceiving. When you pick it up, you're like, wow, that's a lot of a lot of weight to it. I like that they kept the uh, the charging on the top still, though, even though it's the wireless charging, yeah. guys. Yeah, you can put your phone there. I like it that it's still there because like the Mylon doesn't have that, you know. Yeah. What what I like, guys. The number one thing I like with anything. <laughs> is see see okay so she's falling in love with this model guys that's a good thing 
Um, what I like a lot in, in the, the line of work that I've done for many years is I like uniformity. So in a production field, when you have orange and black or charcoal gray, whatever that is, notice that that matches, right? It all matches. So this looks identical to its big brother, the E2000. So if I put this on top of that one, it matches, see? So I like that, you know, like, you know, on a stage when you watch a concert and you see a half stack or a full stack of, of you know, what, whoever, Fender or whatever, you it looks nice, it just has a clean look. And I, I do like how Pecron stayed with the same, like literally it's the same thing, mm -hmm. except like you said, that it doesn't have the covers on them. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about the screen now? So the screen, uh, the battery is this way, yeah. which that's the same. same. Uh, the 68 percent was the same. Yeah. But then it has this. See this AC out? Yeah, you got Now it. that's nice because that does not it's really have that it's in. Speedometer. Yes, it's, yeah. it, it, and it's probably. Uh, I don't know if it's here and here. Like here, this is the watts. I don't know if that's watts in or out. I'm assuming it's out, and then the top one is mm -hmm. in. But you know the speedometer is kind of neat though, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's turn on the DC. Okay, so here's DC outs, and then here's um, uh, AC out, and then you have AC out also it's here. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe this is in mm. or out, and then that just kind of shows you. And, you know, it kind of lets you know, hey, you know, you're pushing the limit a little bit. Now, this goes all the way up to 100%. So it, it doesn't go up to 1,200 watt hours. It goes to 100%, which gives you a baseline to say, hey, I have 25% more power, and then I have to figure out, 25 so that's uh 300 watts left of something i could plug in you know through the ac but overall it's a, it's a very it's a cool it's simple it's effective it has the time stamp here which on the other one it's it's very similar right yeah i don't yeah. think they wrote time i think it's a clock instead yeah yeah, yeah. so let, let's see now here guys this is the huge difference check this out when you hit this ac out okay on the other one you get the options look at that power factor zero because we don't have anything running right but look at the voltage out there. Yeah. Right? The voltage is 121 volts. You know what? The, the, that's fantastic, guys. Like, yeah. if you look at, at the house grid, here, I'll, I'll go here, I'll go voltage here. Okay, this is 111. Okay, now this is not tied to the house. This is actually tied to the E2000 LFP. So the difference of that is if you're running expensive stuff, you know, high end equipment, high end electronics, stuff like that, server boards. Um, this voltage is not going to be very friendly to those equipments, um, but uh, this voltage would. So th the irony that this little box has a better voltage out than the first generation E2000 LFP. Now everything after the first generation is 120 out, but that's a very good voltage for a little box like this, guys. Now remember when you go higher voltage, um, hold on, I got to sneeze here. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Presentite. Boys, it was. It, I'm in my workshop, guys. It's dusty. Um, uh, so 120 uh, volts is very, very good, and it came in at 68 percent. That's usually strange because it usually comes in between 35 and 50 percent when you ship a battery. If you ship it all the way full, it, sometimes it's unstable. But uh, so here you have. Uh, this is your five-pin aviation port right here, and then you have your barrel this is probably a 5521 i have to look all this up guys this is the first time i've ever seen the system other than pictures on the internet um now notice this one it changes that right power factor in that and now the dc will probably do something see look at that 26 volts guys so now you know that this is a probably uh, a 20 what would you say probably a 24 volt system which means that this is the same battery uh, chemistry structure as the the big brother the e2000 lfp so Overall, guys, I, I like it. It's clean. It's pretty. It's cool looking. Um, go ahead. Yeah. I also want to know what's in here. Well, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was impatiently waiting. I know. Me too. I want to see if it's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing that I really like, guys, I'm very, very thankful for that, that, that uh, you know, this company sees us as a big enough channel to, to review their stuff, guys. I mean, you know, they send us uh, out, out for us to look at it. And if we don't like it, we, we, we could throw it away if we wanted to. I mean, I, I think that's very humbling as far as how fast this channel is going. Uh -huh. And I want to thank all the scribers for making that, you know, that happen. Oh. All right, so here's what we got. Now, oh. what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Mrs. Rambling Bob learn about cables, too. Oh, no. And um, now what you're going to do is you're going to open that up, and then I'll explain, and maybe you'll know, too. Yeah. Right? So, okay, so let's open it up. Wait, you have to make the noise. Oh. Right? Oh. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, so one thing right away. That's you a have, charger. And it's a small one, too. So well, this is probably a 300 watt charger. It's a small charger for a small 
you know. That's true. Yeah. It's not the size, guys. It's how you use it. So the the neat thing, if you want to grab the other charger, the uh, not the the, the non lunch box. No, you don't. Know, bring them both. Oh. Bring them both. Okay. So we'll set this aside just for a second, guys, and we'll focus on the charger. We'll do one thing at a time here. So let me uh, let me turn this down a little bit so you can get a little bit more focus here. Okay. So this is the P twenty two eleven, and this I believe it's three hundred watts. And if you want to unhook that system for me, mm -hmm. okay. One of my systems is uh, all done charging for the day, so it beeps, so you got to uncharge it. Now, this is the original lunchbox, guys. Look at the difference. That's a monster difference as far as the size, right? A big difference. I mean, look at that. That's a huge difference as far as, you know, because you have to carry this. I'm not a fan of these boxes, but they're much better than the original. This is the original. As you notice, it's very big. It's boxy, and it's bold, and it looks like uh, your dad's lunchbox back in the 70s. And then they came out with this guy. This is a bad boy. It's better. The power factor and the voltage is better. It's good for uh, generators and stuff. Now, notice that they're getting better. They're getting there, guys. See that? Both 600 watts. This one is, um, let's see. Let me do the math real quick. It's 42 times 7. I think that's 294 watts. So you'll probably get about 260-ish, 270 out of here, I'm guessing. But look at the difference, guys. It really makes a difference when you look at them like that and you look at them like this. So I, I, I think that's a... Yeah, the, you know, one, two, three. So, you know, daddy, mama, baby, I guess. But, uh, okay, so let's put these aside here. Mrs. Ramblin' Bob is running over there chasing the cat. Yeah. Okay. And now we have this. So we have basically this little guy here. That's the power. Okay. Uh, now you can also charge this sucker up to 400 watts input by solar. That's, uh, that's awesome. Or 400 watts, which means, guys, which means... 5-pin aviation, I can use the Big Brother charger to charge this at 400 watts. Just because it's a 600-watt charger doesn't mean you can't use it. The chargers will understand how the MPPT controllers and how the boards are in here. They will downstep the power output to match the max at 400 watts. So let's see. You need one more cable to that bad boy. You got this guy. Well, look at this here. Safety first, I guess. I hate those. Okay, I'm going to throw that away. <laughs> You ever see that video where they throw it and they crash? Okay. Anyway, so this is the cable, guys. Yes. And then that goes on top of there. Okay. And then you have other ones. Now, I'm going to let Mrs. Rambling Bob continue, and then uh, we're going to explain what they are. So, any one you want. This one. Okay, that bad boy. Now, do you know what that is, dear? I know that you can use it for uh, plugging in for solar. I remember there, there you go. Okay. It just unplugged one over there. Yeah, you just, yeah, <laughs> see, she just unplugged the exact same port. Now, this is called an Anderson Power Pole. This is a 15-amp charging cord for solar panels and whatnot. I'm not too much of a fan of these. No. I like these guys, and you know they're coming, guys. Um, so this is your 5-pin aviation port, which will go here, and then you can plug this into a solar panel if you have Anderson Power Pole, up to 15 amps or 400 watts max, whichever comes first. 32 volts to 95, so same as the Big Brother, except all that power is bitten squished in a little box like this. So that's cool. Okay, we'll put that there, and now the next one is... You pointed at that one, so I'm going this way. There you go. Okay. How do you like the box, though? Yeah, it's, they're always nice boxes. We have four of those now. I know. Yeah, we're, we're collecting these boxes, guys. They're like a badge of honor to have these boxes, I guess. So, <laughs> all well, right. I so. know this. this is a 12, it goes in the 12 volt hole, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what did they call that way back in the days? The cigarette lighter. There you go. This, <laughs> the cigarette lighter port, guys. You all remember yeah. that, right? And Smoking then, is bad, okay? Um, and then and, there's that in. And then that's the 5521 <laughs> barrel port. So the barrel port goes in right here, of course. So, Mrs. Rambling Bob is getting very educated with all this craziness. Ever since we started the channel, we, we work together, and the same as what you guys are doing, we're all learning as a team, and that's the best part about this. It doesn't matter where you come from or who you are, you can learn anything if it's difficult if you just put your mind to it and, and listen long enough, and it'll come to you. Okay, so the last one you get is... Okay, this one, I was actually... I remember... I can't remember the name of this one, but I know it because you usually swap all the stuff over to this, yep. and you like them better, but they're a little harder because you have to pinch them take them on and yep, off and I yep. struggle with it all the time. But yeah, I, a little bit. Okay, yeah. so here, I'll show you what she's referring to, guys. These are actually really nice. These are actually cable ties and they use them in the sound industry a lot because they're very clean and you can reuse them just by putting this like this. You wrap, like, say, two fingers like this, which is your cords, and then you obviously tighten them down. Ugh. Well, usually you have two hands. Dear, if you'd hold that one, and you'd hold that one, see, okay, and then see how you can hold the cable together? No, you stuff like that for Or you can, you oh. can handcuff your fingers if you need to. Yeah. But uh, th these are really nice, guys. I, I do like companies that give these. And then the easiest way to store these is a very simple way of, because, uh, you see, they're, they're real goofy. 
Um, if you roll them up from the big side first, okay, and you roll them like this, you can really roll them very nice. And it looks like there's one here, and there's one here, and there's one here. So you get four of these bad boys. And now look at this here, see? And you can toss them in your bucket. The, I, I don't keep them anymore, but it's nice to have. The best part is so it keeps your cables together, like this, you know? Yep. But yep. it doesn't pinch them or put too much pressure 100%, on them yep. without if, them getting all tangled, too. Yep, if you ever wrap up cables like this, guys, the best thing to do, and the only thing you should be doing, is don't squeeze them. I'm going to do the wrong thing so you can see, okay? Don't squeeze these ends tight like that, okay? <gasps> so what that does is it rips that copper in there. It's very bad to do that. Now, I did that as a demonstration. Obviously, you don't want to do it. I've got tons of these cables, so I didn't need this one. But uh, the, my, my point is, is if you keep them bubbly like that, a nice arc doesn't put pressure on, on the, uh, the copper inside there, the cables. You could squeeze the middle as long as it has what I always call the bow tie look. If you've ever seen a bow tie, I don't know, some of you kids are kind of young, but a bow tie is an old fancy uh, weird looking tie that uh, uh, us old fellers had to wear when we were kids and that's all I'm going to say about that. What's the name of this one over here again? This was the Anderson Power Pole. This is MC4. You almost had it. Oh, it was yep. close. Yeah, it was very close. So this is MC4, and then this is the 5-pin aviation. They do make a 4-pin, guys. Don't try to put a 4-pin in a 5-pin, and vice versa. You will wreck your power station port. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, the reason that I took this apart, and that's the only one I took apart, is I wanted to show you uh, the, these you just kind of pull apart, but they're not waterproof, guys. And that's, that's a problem if you're going to put that outside. This belongs in the house, of course. But if you use it outside, you don't want to have that outside. So these are actually 100% waterproof. You can put this underwater, literally. Don't recommend it. Don't do it. But if you click them together, you see that? That's a silicon ring in there. And then on this port, if you open this side, okay, you will see a silicon squishing kind of grommety thing, okay? So inside here, you have ugh, that little guy. This is 100% waterproof, guys. So you push this in there, and then you... Uh, it's a little different. It's a little different than the ones I have. Did a little make, skinnier. Didn't you make a video on how to? Yep, yep, make I, those? yep. I showed people how to do this. Absolutely. And then you take That's this cool. little guy. This is your squisher. This is like a pincher. It goes like this. So imagine if you had something. I don't know. Here, I'll use this. And you see how it pinches around it, mm -hmm. except it's pinching a silicon seal, guys. So once that gets in there like that, right? And then you take the little squisher, and you go like this. Okay. Uh, and you want to put them real tight, not overly tight, guys. Uh, if you have the uh, the Bougar V tools, guys, to make these, the crimper set, awesome tools, guys. I highly recommend them. Uh, you twist them one click. That's all I do. Uh, so basically, well, here. Give me one second. Give me one second. La, 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 la. So here's the Bougar V uh, tools that come with the crimper set. So if you're going to do these, okay, so let's open this just a tad. Okay. Okay. So... You put one on here like this. You see it goes in the hole like this. and only fits one way, okay? Then you hold that off to the side. Make sure you have this off that way. That's actually the squishers that go here so you can open that. See that? So you take this one and you have, the, see this open side here? And you put that on your piece like this, okay? And you go around and you want to go until you hear one click, no more. See that? One click. When you hear the click, you stop. Otherwise, you're going to over tighten these. And remember, this is plastic. You will crack them. Okay, if we can put that somewhere here. One click, that's it. That's what they have. Okay. One click, that's it. All right. Yeah, that's so uh, the reason I did that is uh, so when you put them together like this, guys, that is 100% waterproof. Okay. Uh, you can go up to, I think it's three meters underwater. Do not do that. It's not a good idea. It's very extremely dangerous. Um, but uh, other than that, you have the, the line, the dash, which is the negative, and that usually goes up here. This, these will slide all over the place, guys, so don't worry about those. Um, they'll fall, they'll slide. Um, it, it's nice they're on there, though, because a lot of companies don't care. They just put the lines out and they say, guess, right? And then here's your positive on this side. So that's what it does, guys. And then that, that tool, now I don't use the tool anymore, guys. If you have nails, if you're a lady, if you have fingers that are kind of big and you can't get in there, I go like this with two fingers, I squeeze it. Oh, that's a tough one. Ugh, there you go. Yeah, it's brand new, guys. Okay, so there you go. Um, so that's a uh, the reason why a lot of people don't like this is because it squishes their fingers. Mm -hmm. So now you have everything. Wait, no, no, no. 
we have oh. to get to my favorite oh, part. Boy. Okay, guys, are they? Let's hope they get it right this time, guys. Um, user manual. Okay, so this is the scariest thing. This is very nice. It almost looks like a laptop case, does it not? It does. It, it, it really no, does. No, 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 we're focusing on this. Okay, so I was trying to distract the attention of this because I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm 100% afraid to read this. Okay, guys, um, the, I, I was probably the first one out there on YouTube that brought the attention to Pecron because they released this without updating it. And yeah. this. Yep, on the other one, the uh, 2000 LFP. And this entire channel was built off that menu. This little piece of paper, like the little manu uh, manual, built an entire 300 plus people, 50,000 view channel. As crazy as that was, that's Hi, what scribbers. happened. Hi, Scribers. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going places together, guys. So, pretty simple. I don't see anything different. You do have uh, dual USB C's, but we'll do the, save that for the review. I just want to see if anything is kind of out of out of the place, out of ordinary. Um, it's got an overlay. Here's a temperature sensor. Um, solar charge time recommended: 200 watts would be three to four. 400 watts would be one to two and a half, depending obviously if the sun is cooperating or not. Uh, here's your packing list. So you got your your pec rod, your charger, uh, your MC4s, your um, cigarette lighter and then your Anderson so everything was here so that's good that's a very good positive thing and then it tells you all recharge time and everything uh, so far what I see uh, very good very positive uh, everything looks good I, I didn't read through it all the way sometimes the uh, translation from Mandarin or Chinese to English a little rough but you know they're getting better they, they're learning guys they are learning and all companies have to start somewhere um, these are much better uh, diagrams than in the E2000 LFP. Pecron, good job on these. I like these. Uh, and everyone who's followed this channel knows that um, even though uh, we got this free, guys. It's a 100% sponsor review. Thank you, Pecron, for that. Uh, Thank you, Pecron. But that is irrelevant to me when it comes to the review because I am 100% honest and critical. If I don't like something, I'm going to tell you. Um, these are funny, but they don't, they don't bother me. The little, uh, it, it looks like, guys, if, if, if you use your imagination, don't they look like the Ninja Turtles? Is it just me? Don't they have a Ninja Turtle face? Because they have that wide mouth? Sure, honey. Okay, well, you know, there's my childhood. So, <laughs> but it, it, it just, it looks like a, almost like a ninja, but there right? Was, wasn't there four of them, or was there three? Well, yeah, but shh, there's only three here. So oh. this is Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. We don't know what happened to the other one. I think he retired and moved to Vegas. But, um... Neat little box, guys. I can't wait to review it. Um, we got all the parts here. I guess there's uh, only one thing to do. So, um, one, two, three, guys, all together. Let's get ready to ramble. You didn't do it good. Let's do it again. Come on. I ready to ramble. Yeah, that's what I said. And I said review, so it was pretty Oh, she said review. Guys, it's ramble. It's rambling, Bob. All right, one, two, three. Let's get ready to ramble. All right, guys, we're back with the Pecron E600 LFP. So this, I, I, I like this little box, guys. Um, when I first got it, I'm like, it's really cool looking because it matches exactly to the, the, the big brother, if you will, which is the E2000 LFP. Um, same uh, bumpers, the same quality as the bumpers. Um, uh, s same quality covers, except they didn't put the covers here, and that's okay. Uh, you could buy these actually. You know, if you go on eBay and Amazon, they actually have for like I think it's like two dollars or three bucks or something like that. You could buy these little covers if if that's what you like. Some people don't like these. Um, I think that they only covered the ones uh, on the sides uh, for uh, yeah whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, I have the AC uh, inverter on, and now I'll put the DC inverter on. Okay. Um, now notice that that time kicked down to 34.4 hours, um, but I want to show you something pretty cool. So, if if you have uh, just the AC on at 82% power, which will give you probably about f maybe 400 and some watt hours in there, um, it, th this box will sit here on idle with the AC on, according to this, for about 50 hours. That's pretty good, guys. So if you're running something like uh, I don't know, just anything that's time consuming, you know, this is a couple of days of power. Um, you know that uh, you have at least on idle, if, if uh, like, a, like, say you put a refrigerator to this, a small fridge or something like that, uh, you know you have 50 hours on idle and then depending on what the fridge draws, you have uh, that in, in the process. So you don't have to worry about this thing dying on you uh, within a, you know, a short time while you're waiting for the compressor or something to kick back on. So that's a plus. That's a plus. Um, I do like this model so far because like I said, it, it, the quality 
it seems very very durable the same as the other one was as far as the case i love the handle the handle is a big let me put this up a little bit so you can see it but boom okay so i i love the handle it's very durable uh it's strong it's, it seems to uh uh you know like with the, the rubber coating and everything is very nice that they put that I, I i don't like plasticky feeling but the the rubber it's uh over time we'll have to see if, if it does that um you know that kind of shedding feel that rubber gets it doesn't feel like it's going to i've, I've had a lot of speakers in in my my days and uh, I'll, some of them use that really crappy rubber coating this is actually pretty decent guys it's not bad at all uh, and it packs away very nicely obviously the the big one doesn't have that because it's too much pressure on the case so they have the handles on the sides on the e2000 um, but I, I like this it's a smaller box it weighs about 20 pounds um, so now I want to show you I'll go back to this here uh, this little screen here and then I'll show you what's all on the screen and then I'll show you all the uh, or tell you about what it you know each uh, little piece has and then what the battery composition is and everything so uh, 50 hours on AC on standby with 82% so that would probably go up to about I'm, I'm just gonna guess about 60 hours if this was complete now I, I depleted this one full cycle so I know exactly uh, well, actually two full cycles so I could see what I get on a fresh battery pack and everything as far as the um, uh, the battery capacity and whatnot so I want to show you this now so we're gonna turn on the DC okay and we're going to turn off the AC. I want you to watch this time. Notice the time shot up to 166 hours, guys. That's fantastic. Because if you have a small 12-volt fridge or something, there's a regulated port also. It stays on. Um, if, if you have a small fridge, look at the time, guys. You're talking more than, oh, my God. I don't even know what that is. Let me see. 166 uh, divided by 24. I got to think. That's that's a week. Guys, that's a week. Literally, it's almost a week. So if if... If the uh, calculations of this is correct, which I'll test in, in you know, for, uh, later videos, um, if this is correct, guys, this DC port of this will last 166 hours. That's almost seven full days. That's crazy. That's crazy for a small box like this to be on standby. Uh, great idea for like a security system, guys, right? And then you update it once a week or plug it in once a week. Uh, power outage. The security system still runs, right? Small little box like this. I mean, look, look here's my hand, right? It, it's it's dinky it's like the eb3a from blue eddy um except i i like the colors of this i really do um i i didn't like the orange when it first came out but i i learned to like it because uh our favorite holiday is halloween uh and uh that obviously matches halloween so it it, it, it kind of grew on me okay so we have that okay and then uh i'm gonna go right down the uh the whole spectrum okay this uh the name of the product is the pecron e600 lfp now the LFP stands for lithium iron phosphate. That's the battery chemistry that's inside here. It's a bunch of small cells or packs. It's probably cells. Um, they look kind of like this, guys, except they're much bigger. Uh, let me take one of these. Okay, so they look kind of like this, but they're bigger. They're like 16, 680s or 860s, something like that. Um, it looks like a, a AA battery on steroids. It's just big, big power cell. They have it in uh, tools and stuff too. Sometimes, like Milwaukee has that. Um, that those those cells. Um, so that's life pole four is the chemistry uh, makeup of, of this battery and that's lithium iron phosphate now that's nice because the 614 watt hours and the battery pack is 25.6 volts battery pack inside this puppy and uh at 24 amp hours okay to give you an idea uh now that uh battery chemistry is very very nice because it's 3,500 cycles to 80%. To give you an idea of what that means for, you know, folks that have, you know, no reference of what that means, you know, a million cycles to 20%. Um, 3,500 cycles to 80% means that you can use this battery for 10 years every single day, uh, cycling the battery one time a day for 10 years, guys. That's crazy amount of time. Uh, I don't think you'll have this for 10 years. You'll probably buy a bigger and better one, or maybe you will. Who knows? Um, to 80%, which means that if, if, if I can reference by, by visuals, uh, this is obviously 100% of the battery, uh, so this would be about 80% of the battery, which means the top portion of the battery cells will not completely fill because batteries deteriorate over time, like everything, you know. Um, you know, uh, our cars deteriorate, so you can't use them, you know, 100% speed <laughs> when they get old. So these will go down to approximately 80% after 3,500 cycles. That is yet to be seen. That is what they're rated at. Um, obviously, you'd have to burn out 3,500 cycles to test that. That's going to take some time, guys. Um, 
it also has uh, a, 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 a typo error, okay? So on Amazon, when you go to Amazon you look and you read the descriptions, now these guys put up uh, the uh, descriptions of all these companies. They put them up sometimes too fast. Um, this is a very exploding company that is, is expanding like, you know, like that. Uh, new, new ones of these come out all the time, like almost every week it seems, my gosh. So on Amazon, in the description uh, on their page, which I'll talk to Pecron about, I'll send him an email, um, Amazon says 3,500 uh, cycles to 85%. Now that is incorrect because the battery chemistry of lithium iron phosphate is rated at 3,500 cycles to 80%. So it's, it's not much of a difference, guys, but I want to make that known. Like I said, I'm very, very critical of everything I, I see on here, and I try to back up everything I say uh, as far as where I got the information or how, how I got it. That's why I show so many videos of testing and stuff. So I believe the true rating of this battery uh, is 3,500 cycles to 80%. It's also on Pecron's website. It's 3,500 cycles to 80%. So I think it was just a simple typo. Uh, like I said, you know, they make these pages so darn quick. Um, all right, let me uh, let me turn both on. So neat. Uh, the AC out. You, you get the meter only when the AC is on. You don't get it with the DC because uh, your DC is here. But this is like a speedometer. It's pretty neat, guys. Pretty neat. I'll go over this uh, last. Um, the operating temperature of this bad boy is uh, negative four degrees Fahrenheit, so below freezing, guys. You can use this in four degrees below, up to four degrees below freezing. That's helpful. Um, this will run a very small heater. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, just a, a sample of the test. I'm, I'm not going to do any tests today on video because I, I, I did them all already and I just want you guys to, to hear about the test and then I'll, I'll uh, upload the videos where you can actually see the test. This is a 400 watt heater. I'll put it right up here. Yeah, I'll just pop that right there. Um, hope you can see that. I'll turn it sideways so we can see the lights on. Okay, there you go. So it, as, as you see how this meter works is now notice it's at 25%, which is that's that's correct, right guys? So this is a 1200 watt inverter inside there and that's 25%, which means, oh, there it went up to 50%. See the surge? Now it's up to 532 watts and now it's up to uh, 50%, which this is a basically a simple meter. It's one, two, three, four. I don't like meters like that, but I think this is kind of cool. It looks like a speedometer. You have the actual wattage right here, 454 watts, which is technically just a hair uh, under 50% of the rate is see how see how, see how I drop back down to 25 so this is not going to be a hundred percent accurate this is kind of like a what's known as a, a fool's gauge it kind of gives you a representation but this is accurate guys this is pretty accurate um, so that way uh, you know if, if you're new at power stations or you just want to you know like remind yourself how much power you have and notice that the the down uh, kick is is very slow and uh, that's okay uh, it there's a little uh, uh, temporary pause uh, between when you charge it or when you use a load and it, it has to reset real quick and I'm okay with that I'm okay with that uh, and then all the way up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit guys that's hot I, if you're at 113 I feel bad for you right off the bat uh, this will just make it better because you can hook a fan to it and at least try try to stay cool because 113 is crazy I've been in 120 degree uh, weather uh, in uh, um, like uh, Harley Davidson has uh, underground facilities where they they build motorcycles and stuff, and uh, you know I was doing a uh, 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 mechanical work in there, and uh, um, unbelievably hot guys. You're only allowed to stay in there for about four or five minutes, and then uh, OSHA regulations you have to get out, sign a piece of paper, and then go back in to prove that you came out of that environment because you know people die in environment. It's crazy. That's 120 degrees. You have no idea what hot is until you're standing in a 120 degree blast tunnel. And it's unbelievably dry and the air is whipping by you so fast because they use the air to cool down like steam pipes and stuff like that. And uh, unbelievable. Uh, you can't breathe. You, you, you sweat. By the time the sweat goes down your forehead, it's gone. It literally it, uh, evaporates. It's, that's hot. That's hot, guys. I don't recommend that. And I don't do that anymore. Uh, stay out of that heat. <laughs> kind of heat. Um, so this battery would definitely not be good in that area. Um, okay. So uh, the packing list, which we saw on the other video... Uh, we don't really have to go over it because you guys saw it if you want to go back and look at that again. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so the AC part. So we're going to do the AC part first, which is these three bad boys here and this. Now, there's no buttons here like on, on the... On the uh, uh, oh, no. Wait, it's the same. I was thinking of another power station. Sorry. The Arcutel has a little buttons here. Um, so here's our DC out. And that turns on this one. I'm sorry. This one. 
is the DC out, this one is the AC out, and then this is the input where you're charging. Okay, so we're going to focus on this portion, the middle portion right here. Now, on the on, on the inside of here, you have a 1200 watt inverter. Now, being that this is a 614 watt hour battery, um, obviously, um, that's double uh, the actual uh, uh, si uh, power size than the battery. So your uh, inefficiency is going to obviously drop because of that. Um, Let's see. Cause usually, you want to balance a uh, uh, inverter with the size of the battery for for uh, optimal uh, positions. But being that this little box here, this little toy, it looks like a toy. This little toy can put out 1,200 watts and run a heater or uh, um, a microwave or something like that. That uh, amazing, guys. I mean, this is no bigger than the size of a car battery, and and literally can do that. Um, you can't really run a microwave on a car battery because it won't last very long. Okay, so you have three outlets here, and the nice thing about these three outlet. Uh, compared to the original version, the E2000 LFP, this is like the, the, the little nephew or the baby of that one. Um, these are 120 on version one, guys. This is the first version, and they have 120 volt outputs. Awesome. Thumbs up, heck right on that. Uh, it, the original one that I have is only 110. Now, why that's important is when you do uh, very expensive electronics or high-end stuff like that or medical equipment, 120 is just better for the equipment. Okay, the idle power is about 2% per hour uh, with, with only the AC on, which now you notice that we dropped it down because remember we used a little bit of power with that heater, we're down to 49.4 hours, which is still, guys, that's two days, right? That's two days full of standby power, so this could sit here idle for two days, uh, and then that's, uh, n that's not even 100%, guys, so I figured that would go about two and a half days uh, at full charging capacity. Um, I used a little bit of power before because I want to try something. Uh, so I got to charge it back up. Uh, let's see. The next thing we have is the battery capacity. The battery capacity that I got, guys, was approximately 85%. Uh, it was 515 watt hours out of 614. Um, I would say that's average, right? I would say it's average. I think Jackery gets about 90, but those are lithium ion batteries. It's different. You're also, remember, you're pushing a 1200 watt inverter. That's huge, guys. That's a lot of power for this little battery. Um, Let's see, uh, full uh, load voltage drop. So when, when you push the system all the way up to about 1200 watts uh, rated output power, the voltage drops to about 118 at the lowest point that I saw. Very acceptable, guys. There's a little, just a little bit of uh, dirty signal on the, on the pure side way, but it's not, not bad at all. Uh, like I said, you're putting out 1,200 watts. I recommend the sweet spot in this one is 400 to 600 watts is the sweet spot because, remember, that's the size of the battery. So, uh, you know, you're pulling out twice what this battery is, you know, 600-watt battery, and you have 1,200 watts yanked out of it. That's a lot of power for a little car battery like that. Um, okay, the sound decibels. Now, this is really cool, and, and this is the easiest way I can explain it. The sound decibels at about 5 feet away is 45 decibels. That's very low, guys. Uh, to give you an idea, I'm going to give you a test that you can hear. Hopefully, you have earphones on. A whisper is 30 decibels. This is a whisper. That's 30 decibels approximately. Okay, talking, while well, I'm talking right now, a normal conversation is about 60 decibels. So, you're halfway between a whisper and an average conversation. Very acceptable if you have this next to you and you're sleeping or you're sitting there watching a movie or, you know, whatever you're doing. Very acceptable. Good job, Peckron. Um, Okay, the... Uh, let's see, the charger, the little power brick, I'll show you in the unboxing part. Uh, it's a 300 watt charger and it runs really nice and quiet until of course it heats up and the fan kicks on. And then it's about the same as, you know, just about any charger out there. It's a little noisy, uh, but I have a trick that I'll explain in one second. So that charger was able to pull from my wall off my meters, 325 watts at the highest point. And that was converted into the system because remember that's 120 going into you know 24 or 20 25.6 so that has to drop down of course uh and that was at 282 that was the most that i saw it doesn't mean that's the, the the top that you could get because that's just the most i saw uh batteries at different uh levels take different charges uh as it gets more and more it fills up and obviously that charging would trickle down but now here's the trick guys and this is something that i I tested myself it works absolutely perfect so remember 282 remember that number if you use this is a five pin aviation style port now what's nice about that is it's the same as the e2000 lfp guys same so i use that new one 
Oh, actually, I used both. I used the lunchbox and the new one I got for the E2000. That one pulled from the wall 452 watts, and the input bar was 392. That's the most that I saw in my testing. That's fantastic, guys, because now you're pushing the limit of the 400 watt um, input for the MPPT controller and the BMS. And the uh, the nice thing about it is when you use a bigger charger, guys, it's it's like having a four cylinder and, and versus a V8. A four cylinder does not like the freeway because the RPMs have to run so fast and and so hot, you know, to get that car moving. However, a V8 engine will just literally idle at 60 miles an hour on the freeway. I mean, it will sit at like 1,000 or 1,200 RPMs sometimes if you got, you know, a stick shift, you put it in six year, and you can literally idle down the freeway. So that runs cooler, guys, which means the fans don't kick on as much. Maybe once, I think it was every, I don't know, three or four or five minutes, something like that. And uh, very good if you want to charge it and, and keep the noise down. Uh, very, very good. And then, uh, as I said before, there's a slow charging start where when you plug this in, I, I'm gonna show you in real time, give me one second here. I should have had this ready and I do apologize. I gotta get a cord real quick. Uh, this is the the power for the, let me grab this one and let me grab this one. Okay, I should have had all this ready. So we're gonna plug this in. This has been reset 100% as you see zero, it's just zeroed out. Um, now, I, I don't know if this means anything, but uh, Pecron kind of uh, recommended to some folks that you plug this side in first and then this side and I, I I'm okay with that because when you go to plug this in guys if you have it turned the wrong way right possibly I doubt it you could you know these these are live when they're plugged in these things you know that's a lie so you put your finger in there and you have a bad day so um, you plug this in first now you don't have to do this this is just something that you know uh, uh, Pecron has told other people and then see you can plug this portion and see it This is the same as plugging in the wall So you just plug it here and I want you to watch the the uh, delayed reaction from the charging process Notice that this kind of kicks up, but nothing's going in yet. So give it a second watch it in real time And I'll grab the other charger. Okay, the the the, the king daddy and I'll put it up here because I'm going to show you a trick with that I found a really cool trick with this guy. So I'll put this off to the side here for a second. Okay now notice that um, there. Okay, now did, did you see that long pause before it started charging? What that is, is that's the MPPT, uh, uh, MPPT controller, that's a mouthful, um, talking to this little box, talking to the batteries with the BMS and saying, hey, what's the best voltage input and balancing and wattage and all that stuff that we, sh we, we could do so, uh, you know, we could charge these bad boys. And notice that it's up 324. And this is up to about 280. That, I guess that uh, 260, 270 when, it, when I first saw it. Uh, it actually goes up a little higher, and I'm okay with that. Um, of, of course, you'd always like to see the 300, but there is conversion loss. See this guy? So it is a 300 watt charger. It's actually more than 300. But here at the actual output input area, uh, you're getting 277 right now. But I, I want to show you a trick now. Like I said, now I'm going to unplug this. To, I want you to see that delay, okay? Notice it still thinks there's 280 watts going in. So there's a little bit of time. Uh, refreshing now watch that drop down see? see okay so it dropped down that's okay for me I'm okay I don't need instant you know I'm not like one of the kids who have to have popcorn now and stand in front of a microwave I know you do that because I did that too as a kid but uh, I, I have more patience when I'm older as far as technology because I understand that it's very expensive and you have to replace it if you break it so if it, if it needs time to refresh itself I'm okay with that and that wasn't that wasn't very long guys you know a few seconds so now I plug this one in like you know uh, uh, they, they recommend and then now uh, here this is the um, let me see if I can move this camera back here so you can see a little bit more guys um, this is the there we go okay so this is the uh, E2000 LFP now notice it's bigger uh, let me see if I can put this up a little bit here like all this charger it's only me guys I don't have a fancy cameraman and a crew and all that stuff it's just you know one guy named Ramblin Bob and he just does these reviews so you can see by the size difference okay that it's obviously much much uh, bigger this is 600 watts and this is only 300 but watch when I plug this in okay you're gonna see that same pause let me see if I can get this in here okay there so that's in there now okay so I'll leave it up there and uh, now notice that there's no uh, you have energy going out right six seven it's basically talking it's ta this is talking to this and talking to the batteries and all working together like a team to say what's the best way to charge this battery but I want you to see a cool thing and notice that you could hear the fan on the small one when we turn that on 
Hopefully that's on video. I hope so. It seems like it. Um, I film on a GoPro, so it's hard to see that little screen. Now, notice that it finally kicked on. See that? And then this will slowly ramp up. I like that, guys. That's almost like a soft start. Have you guys ever seen a, a soft start for um, uh, air conditioners and whatnot? That's a nice thing because it's not just, you know, instant. Imagine if you get in your car and you just stomp on the gas. That, that's bad for your engine. It's terrible. You know, a lot of, a lot of us as, as younger kids, you know, we do, you know, hot rod, <laughs> you know, here and there. And uh, th that's bad, guys. That's really bad on your engine. However, that's just what guys do. Um, and there's the gals out there that do that, too. But now here, notice the input now. See, now you're, remember, you were at 282 on this little one, and now you're at 360, and it's still going up. But it's ramping up. See, 380? It's ramping up guys i like that better it's softer on the batteries hence the name soft start it doesn't have such an impact like that um so here we're gonna watch it real quick just for a few seconds here you got 400 and i think it was four what was the most i got 452 is the highest i've ever seen this and the highest i've ever seen this is 392 but now remember this is you know getting to uh, almost full as 18% uh, more and you'll see how quick you could charge it with this bad boy so if you do if you do have the e2000 LFP guys I highly recommend this one this is a awesome can awesome awesome uh, you can use the lunchbox one too but he, he, here's the biggest thing I'm gonna put it real close I want you guys to listen notice how you heard nothing you heard literally nothing this is uh, the V8 engine, this is the four-cylinder. This had to have the fans kick on because you were generating 100% uh, of its power output, right? This is only generating about 60 to 80% of the power output, which means it can idle on the freeway, hence the no sound, right? That's a positive, guys. That's a positive. And the, uh, the, the cooler that you run your equipment, the longer it lasts. And being that this has a soft start and can go up to 400 watts, you're not hurting the system at all. Notice this is 42 volts at 7 amps, and this is 42 volts at 15 amps. It's the same voltage, guys. So this can go anywhere between 32 and 95. So either one will work fine. All three of them. I've, I've tried all three of them. Um, and But just notice that this is making no noise. So if you want to charge this late at night, much better because guys you're not bothering anybody you're not bothering your wife that's watching a movie or sleeping in the couch or the bed next to you wherever you have this it's really cool okay so now, now we saw that um we're going to unplug it from here now we're going to watch this matter of fact i'll pull this too so you can see it okay now notice that this see it stays active it almost has like a um a, a soft start and a soft stop i do like that uh the other pack runs does not have that it instantly uh, goes uh, down right away so i am a huge fan pecker i'm a huge fan of that i like that technology because like i said it's softer and easier on the batteries um imagine if you guys got out of bed in the morning and i made you run on the freeway well you obviously would be upset with that because your body does not like that so a soft start you walk on the sidewalk you run in the street then you get on the freeway that's how your car likes to to ramp up if you will okay so now we're going to talk about the dc part okay the dc portion so we're going to turn the ac off and that'll shut down the entire machine, or you can have both on. And then we're going to turn on just the DC portion, so you can see what the screen would give you. Look at all that stuff. Um, when you have just the DC on. Now, notice we got, look at 170 hours, guys. That's crazy. This can sit here for, for that's like four days. I don't even know how many days that is. Um, anyway, 24, uh, boy, that's, no, that, yeah, that's a week. Guys, that's a week. Um, okay, so here's the DC portion. Now, this button turned on this portion of the power station so this has shut off now it's in the background now this system is much more efficient because uh, on dc because you're going from 25.6 volts or whatever it's resting at see 26.8 um fully charges about 27.8 and that's the the uh floating charge that it holds it right above and then it drops down to about you know 26 27 something like that 27.5 so anywhere in between there you know um, now, that's much more efficient, guys, because it's going from 25 to 13, right? And if you go from 25 to 120, well, that's more, you know, it costs more power to make that more power, right? So it's kind of like a speed on a car. You use more gas to get up, you know, to that speed, 120 uh, miles an hour compared to 13. That's, that's a huge difference, right? Not to mention you're going down. Down is easier than up, guys. Okay, uh, just think of when you when you pick something up very heavy, it's harder to pick it up, but it's easier to put it down, <laughs> right? Okay, so the DC, we're going to uh, talk about the uh, 12, uh, uh, 
12 volt regulated output now this stays on you could run all kinds of you know cool things it is alive so don't go putting your fingers in there guys um it stays on for uh, 24 hours on my test uh, the whole day and um the uh, the max output that I saw on this port was 158 watts max. Now that that could alter. Uh, that's I got it that high before it tripped, and then obviously the the warning comes on and shuts down for safety. Uh, that could uh, uh, be different depending on if it's cooler. Obviously, it's going to keep the system cooler, so it'll it'll put out a little bit more maybe. But uh, it's it's recommended at 10 amps, guys, uh, at 12 volts, which is about 120 watts it can go higher than that which is nice that's nice guys because you know you have an electric blanket or you want to charge something that's nice uh, the, uh it's regulated at 13.6 volts output okay and now you have the barrels underneath now i never use these guys i, I don't know why i just i never use them um these are 255 21 barrels in there okay and there, that means 5.5 millimeter on the outside and 2.1 millimeter millimeter on the inside uh those come out at about 128 uh, watts max um, they're they're regulated I believe at um, uh, 12 volts 10 amps so um, as the same as this but the, the nice thing is or the bad thing is I, I don't use them guys I, I just I don't have anything to plug in there really um, and now you're gonna drop down to the 100 watt output okay now this is the controversy guys remember my 100 watt on my E2000 LFP, it was only putting out 65 watts. So how you can test that in real time is you you know put this into your phone, or I put it into the power station, and the power sta another power station lets me know how much power is coming in and out. And I was able to pull 100 watts, guys. So Pecron, good job. This is an actual true 100 watt output on my model. Happy, very happy. You also have a quick charge USB-C, which is 18 watts. And then you have the quick charge USB-A, which are known as the uh, the grandpa ports, the old ones, the originals, um, uh, which is that uh, like a boxy kind of triangle, uh, boxy rectangle shape. These are 18 watts out, so that charges your phones a little bit uh, faster. The old ones used to be about, I think it's about 12, 12 watts out. So that's uh, that part. Let's see. Then we have that. And now we have the wireless charging, guys. So that's on the top, okay? That's this portion where you can set your phone and you can charge it right there. I don't have a phone with uh, uh, wireless charging, guys. My wife does. She's, uh, she's the fancy girl when it comes to all this technology with phones. I'm the fancy guy when it comes to all this computery stuff. Um, so basically, you put your phone like this. This would obviously not work, guys, because it has a very thick case, and this is a big hunk of metal here. That would obviously interfere with uh, the, uh, the charging aspect of the wireless transmission signal of energy. So you would normally put it like this, and it would start charging right away. Like I said, this does not have wireless charging in it. Let me put this up a little bit. Um, but all you have to do is, pl you know, pop a phone like that. Uh, if 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 you put that up there and it doesn't work, some of the the most simplest mistakes that people make is a they don't turn on the DC output. Simple, right? Simple. And then the other thing is they leave it in the case, guys. And sometimes the cases don't let the energy go through. So take it out of the case, put it there. Sometimes the Otter Box. Uh, it goes through that. Uh, my wife has the Otter Box on hers, and it, it, this one and the E2000 go right through. So that one's okay. Uh, okay. Well, let me see something was here. Okay, I just want to test something. I thought maybe there had a like a a, a, a discharge leak. Okay, so uh, battery capacity on this one now. Now this is the difference on DC guys. This is where you this unit shines. This is a fantastic unit uh, for the DC output. You get ninety one percent. Uh, 560 watt hours compared to about the 515 I got on AC. Now remember that's a much higher voltage. You have to convert that. So 91 percent. Uh, I think that's that, that's decent. I think that's very decent. Especially remember this is a this is a dinky little battery, guys. I mean this is no bigger than a car battery. So I I think that's that's very acceptable. Uh, there are some systems that put out a little bit a higher and better. Uh, capacity than that 91 90 percent and higher is is I, I think it's totally acceptable it obviously saves 10 percent of the battery in reserve so you know you know kill the cells and then uh, uh, so that would technically meaning uh, if it does do that uh, and save 10 percent so you don't kill the cells um, you know you're still looking at uh, technically a hundred percent output because it's above 90 if that makes sense to you um, the idle power now th this is where the uh, the unit shines already and we saw it here guys this will last seven days up to i haven't tested it yet but according to the meter that's what it says so i'm going to test that and obviously you know uh, future videos uh it's 0.5 percent per hour 
uh, approximately. I haven't confirmed that, but that's kind of what I guessed out of my test. And obviously you have to have more than one test. You don't want to just do one test because that test could have flaws or be wrong. Okay, so now we're going to do the charging portion, guys, of this video uh, or this review. Um, and the, so we're going to turn the DC off. Okay. Boop. Okay, so now, this, well, you know what? Here, let's turn them all back on 100%. Okay, there you go. So uh, th now th this is on, this is on, but we're gonna focus on this portion over here, okay? This is two inputs, okay? The first one is real simple. This is a 5521 barrel, and it's covered by a little, uh, little uh, flap here. That's a watershed flap. That's a 5521. Notice that's the same port as over here, okay? Um, that is a 5.5 .5 and a 2.1 millimeter. Um, and now the input of this one is 12 volts up to 18 volts. Uh, you can put up a solar panel that's VOC up to approximately 25. Uh, just, you know, keep an eye on it, guys. Um, it has a 100 watt input max. Once it hits 100, it, it cuts it off kind of like a governor on a car. Okay. And now you have my favorite. I didn't like them at first. I like them now. That is a five pin aviation port. And why I like this guys is uh, this is the same, at least they're, they're uniformed. This is the exact same charger and port that you saw on the other system. So I like when companies make their systems universal. Apple take note. Apple is one of those companies that make you buy 15 damn chargers and cords and cables just to have your three or four phones working. I, I, I don't like that style of, of business. Uh, Jackery's another one. I don't like that. Um, I like when the companies stay very uniformed so you can use their old pieces on the new one. I understand this is a money market business. I, they're trying to make money. I get it. But I don't like the handcuffs, if you will, of you have to use my cable. I never like that. And at least uh, th this is proprietary, right? The five pin aviation, you don't see it much anymore. But at least all their systems seem to have that. And that's nice. That's nice. All the LFPs are the same. That, that's a positive. They're going in a, a positive direction, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, the uh, f voltage is 32 to 95. I'll be ch uh, testing that in later videos. I have tested it already, but I want to do more tests. And 400 watts max, uh, whatever comes first, obviously. Uh, 400 is the absolute limit and then it might go a, a tad bit over 400 but it just spikes and then comes back down uh, like anything you know your when your your cruise control goes over a little bit and then it comes back down regulated um so then you have uh charge through power big question uh, so charge through is basically say i have uh charging from the wall or have it you know coming in from solar panels and i want to run something on dc or ac while i'm doing this right this has that that's nice because you don't have to charge this and wait you can do something while you're charging it very very good added addition to uh, power stations over the years and uh very very useful um the recharging temperatures guys uh, do not charge this below 32 degrees Fahrenheit uh, I don't know and I can't confirm if it has a low temp cutoff and a low temp cutoff basically is say, say you're charging at 25 degrees and which is you know freezing right and I don't know if this would charge I it, it's not cold enough to test this and I don't have a meter to test it and I don't want to open this yet because obviously it's a brand new unit uh, eventually I'll get bold enough and rip this open like I did the other one uh, and then up to 113 which is the operating uh, temperature as, as well uh, max operating <coughs> so uh, that's that is a uh, positive thing to remember guys is don't charge this in the cold I'll, I'll know if it has a low temp cut I know it has a high temp cutoff uh, that that I know for sure but I don't know if it has a low temp I haven't seen that information and I don't have access to it yet now here's the big thing with the charging guys the big thing you can only use uh, one of these at a time unlike the uh, e2000 LFP you can only use either this or this don't try to use them both there's only one MPPT controller in there and it's split between these two ports so don't don't overload the system by putting two in there if if you plug them in at the same time i assume that whatever one you plug in first is going to take uh uh like precedence over the other one or it's going to use this as a default i that's another test i have to uh, do more tests on to, to make sure to see if it switches or not because i don't want to burn out you burn out this mppt controller guys these are a pain in the butt to open so just just to give you an idea okay as far as the description guys uh this is 20 pounds of weight um 
it's it's about ugh, there you go so it, when i pick it up obviously like this if, if, if you want to test it you could take a few like two phone books put them in your hand and try to lift it like that if you live in a big city two phone books um i think that's um about 15 pounds for two phone books about and you can get an idea of what that would weigh um the size is uh as you can see by my hand it's not much bigger than my hand maybe maybe uh, maybe about one and a half of my hands. It's 12 inches wide, guys, by eight inches tall and nine inches deep. Notice that the, the depth is a little bit uh, deeper because you have the battery cells and the boards in there, and you have to keep that stuff separate. So the charging boards are going to be, um, the input charging is probably going to be here, like the the, uh, uh, the E2000 LFP, and then the all the other hardware is back here. Now, notice that it has that same screw right here. And if you pull these off, there's probably hidden screws under here. So I'm assuming, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that it opens the exact same way as the uh, the E2000 uh, LFP. And then these are glued on, so you basically do like a bare grip, and then you kind of just rip it off like that. Uh, I'm not going to take it off yet because, like I said, I want to you know, test it fully before I start you know, getting on the internals of this thing. Uh, the foldable handle, guys, very, very sturdy, as you can see. You can clunk it around here. Um, very sturdy, uh, very well made. Uh, it's got two heavy duty uh, pin screws in there so it's it, and, and and notice that when it goes down it has a thing where you kind of have to push it a little bit uh, more of a snug fit i think that's because of the rubber i love that i don't like if this were to pop open if you were to set it or for some reason you put it in your car and it tipped over and this darn thing would pop out this is very nice that it stays down now, again good job pack run um it has dual fans for cooling there's probably more than just two but this is your your cooling fans here and these are two here and then on this side you have basically ugh, your input and now the nice thing is I, I know you can't see it on video i don't know if i can get close enough but inside there there's a screen guys and the screen is kind of like a lint dust kind of thing where and you can take a vacuum and vacuum this out if you ever need to uh, that stops the crap from going inside your system. That's very, very good because you don't want dust or metal shavings or anything inside the systems that will burn them out. Um, they act like a blanket to these boards. And then you have uh, two little baby fans. They're probably five volts a piece. I don't even know. You can almost read them here. Um, I, I can't read them. Uh, like they're there, but it's hard to read. So you have two little baby fans. I, I assume they're the exact same size and voltage as the other fans. I think that was either 5 or 12 volts. I can't remember. Um, made in China. Uh, but there's two fans. Now, the nice thing about having two guys is if one fails, you have a backup. That's always a good thing to have two. Um, I, I wish I could have two engines in my car. If you think about the computer you're using right now, it probably has multiple cores. It's got you know dual core or quad core or even even more. I'm lucky enough to get a computer with 16 cores in it. Guys. I'm sorry, uh, 12, 12 cores in it. So if, if one core is not doing good, the other three, or I'm sorry, man, holy cow, the other 11, you know, kind of pick up where where that one left off. Um, and then the warranty, guys, is one year. Now, I, I'm not sure. I, I On the E2000 LFP, they give you an extra extended one year if you go to the website and register the product. This system, at least mine, did not come with a register card uh, for this system. Now, I, I don't know if it was just not put in the box or they don't do that on this system. The E2000 had that where you can extend it for a year. Um, and I think overall... That is pretty much uh, everything that uh, has to do with this system. Now, uh, as far as likes and dislikes, I'm going to go down of what I like and dislike. Uh, uh, spoilers, guys, there's not many things that I dislike about the system, if anything, really. I, I mean, it, this is a nice box. I think this system, I think, was made better quality than the E2000 LFP, in my opinion. Um, Everything on here is the same. I'm going to go through the screen real quick, too, uh, except the little power meter, which is, you know, it's just like an average. I, I call it a, a flash. In, in entertainment business, they, they call it flash advertising. You know, ooh, look at that. It's cool. Looks like a speedometer. Um, doesn't really serve much of a purpose if you just watch this. When this gets to 1,200, you already know. But it, it's it's kind of that, you know, that little, ooh, look at that. So uh, let's let's go through the uh, the actual... Uh, things here uh, with the AC on you have your time left down here and you have your wattage out and then when you're charging from solar you have your wattage in this is also uh, if I can put this on too it also doubles as the DC out so uh, with the charge through if you were using the DC 
right? And you were pulling in, let's, let's say 400 watts and you're using 100 watts, right? This would say positive 300, which is obviously just, you know, basically deduct what you're using from what you're bringing in, simple. Uh, if you were using just the AC and you were bringing in 400 watts, this would say 400 and this would say how much you're, you're pulling out through here. And it, and it uh, cycles it through because it has to convert that DC power to AC power, but it is charged through. Um, this is your battery monitor here with the little thing. I noticed that guys there's there's no like here I'm gonna hold down the DC for a few seconds Okay, notice all it does is turn off the DC So this model that I know of doesn't have any secret headache menus guys. That's what built this whole channel um, You don't have to worry about that. You just turn it on you use it awesome awesome product that way uh, your percentage is the same as here except it's a much cleaner number i don't like this bar system this is basically like uh as it was a 10 25 50 75 and 100 i don't like that uh or zero I, you know the wire frame is, could be a number like i have microphones that the wire frame is actually a number like who, who would think of that you know um this i haven't i, I haven't uh, seen how that 100 percent operates that I, I didn't keep uh, track of that but uh it's not needed when you have this this is much easier to, to look at guys um I really wish that uh, these, these these systems, at least for Pecron, uh, maybe in the future ones, they'll have an app. Uh, some people like apps, some people don't. I like apps because it tracks the uh, the you know the power out and the power in and everything. You have a little chart. Um, the bad thing though is you're adding more complexity to the system. This is a battery in a box, guys, and that's what's awesome about this company and this system is their their power stations are that. It's simple. You just want to plug the dang thing in, turn it on, and turn it off. Done. So. Like uh, let's see here. Let's take uh, let's take the 18 watt here, and you pop this in the phone here, and we'll see if it turns on. I don't know if it's gonna turn. Oh, you got wait, it's on. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so charging. See, charging. I don't know if you can see that, but see, charging. There you go. So simple. And then you know you turn it off, right? You're done. I, I don't want all the uh, the fancy stuff, and that's a, a lot of what I hear from the people that come to this channel. They want a battery in a box that they use it. They can make tater tots. They can make a pizza. Use a microwave oven. Charge your phone. And then call out a day, hook it to the solar power, and put it away. Simplicity, guys, sometimes wins the race. Uh, complexity is nice. However, if you don't understand complexity, it can be really big drawback. Um, I like the flaps on the 12 volt. I think that's always a dangerous port because for some reason people like to put their fingers in there. Um, probably because it fits, you know. Um, I like the protection on the inputs. Uh, it doesn't have these, and, and I didn't know that I, I liked them until I saw this model compared to the E2000 LFP because it has it on all the ports, right? So I, I do like that, except the, let's see, no, nope, guys, all the ports. Every single port has a little flap on it, and maybe it's because they didn't have enough room, guys. You know, these flaps take up a lot of room, right? So maybe they didn't have enough room to put the little flaps in there. This one, these they could have, but these uh, maybe, you know, it would have been nice to have like a, 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 like a onesie, if you call it. It's all six of these that you just stick on at the same time. And then when you pull the whole thing off, you use any port you want, you put the whole thing back on for storage. So maybe that's something that they can use. I, I'm, I'm willing to give up my ideas for, for the, uh, the quality of the products, guys. Um, I love testing these. Um, the 120 volt output guys, Pecron, awesome. You don't, you don't have to goof around guys with the lower voltage. Now you got 120. You actually have 121 coming out back to the screen to check that. If you hit this button, notice that the voltage of the battery comes up. Those of us who are experienced with uh, solar and, and, and batteries and voltage and everything uh, will prefer this possibly over the percentage. Those of us who don't understand voltage will like this better. So it, it's it's good that you have both both worlds, right? Something for everybody. And then the AC out, if you just tap that quick, notice it goes, look at 121 volts, guys. That is literally higher than a lot of places that I play in the past, like uh, old bingo halls or churches. You know, you, you plug it in the wall on your, on your meter here to make sure that you're getting, you know, uh, 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 like, you know, the... Uh, the power that you need, you know, so you don't burn out your stuff. Always use a power conditioner, too, guys, if you play random places. Get a power conditioner and get a good one. Get a Furman or something like that. Um, but this, look at this. So the, the, the voltage on the the, uh, the Pecron E2000 is 110.3. Now, notice it's moving because I'm using, and you know, 60 hertz is still pure sine wave, but I'm using this. That system is active over there, and this uh, bar is connected to the E2000 LFP. But the E600 LFP, look at this, right off the bat, it starts at 120. And how you can verify that, guys, is very simply, you take another one of these. If you don't have one of these guys, pick one up, I'm serious. Uh, this is a, a hell of a tool. So you can plop it in here like this or put it over here so you can still see this. And then notice that when we switch this over to 
uh, voltage, look at that guys, it, it, it almost matches up because now it's using a little bit of power to, to power this, 120.3. Now if you had a choice between the two systems and you were an electronics guy or a sound guy or whatever, whatever you do that, that uses electronic or uh, medical equipment, would you rather have 110 or would you rather have 120? Uh, enough said. So that, that's a nice thing and that's how this little box you can verify and use that as a tool to make sure that um, everything that um, uh, Pecron says you can verify it. So that's nice. And then the power factor is obviously the, the power uh, conversion um, what's a nice way to put it so if, if say I have five fingers in, in an engine these are all cylinders right and I'm using all five that's 100% uh, efficiency because using all five so if, if one of them was struggling you know because of the conversion or the inversion or whatever then obviously that would be uh, 80% right so you, you lose a little bit on uh, it's called dirty energy so you know you waste with heat and all kinds of stuff but uh, th this is nice that way um, as far as uh, likes, I love the small size of it, guys. You could take five of these and toss them in your back seat, and it, it wouldn't be a problem. It's 20 pounds, so you can, you know, b basically pick it up and carry it. Um, when you get to the E2000, that's almost 50 pounds, right? That's a big difference. Uh, the one thing I don't like on the system, and, and believe me, this is not a, a, a critical uh, part of uh, by any means is the charging brick is still guys on the outside the, the DC inverter is still external as a brick uh, as opposed to a lot of other systems are going internal now there's two reasons they do this one is to keep the weight down and two is to keep the price down so I understand why they did this hopefully in the future they'll they'll rid this and put this inverter in there notice if you put this in there guys how much more space that would take up inside there right and then you have the other problem you'd have to cool this more so uh, the the uh, the efficiency of this model would go down because this bad boy would be in there all the time and it's just more electronics to and and bits and pieces and and, and you know boards to you know uh, hold and maintain that heat so I, I understand why they did it uh, hopefully in the future they'll figure out a way to uh, you know uh, put that into the system and then there's back to normal um, notice you got 39.9 hours on standby not nothing is doing anything and then if you turn on the uh, I'm sorry, turn, turn off the DC. Notice, look at that, back to 50 hours, guys. So uh, a lot of power in a small box like this, guys. I, I'm very impressed with this model. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to be honest. I'm, a, I'm more impressed with this model as far as uh, the quality of the make over the E2000 LFP. The LFP had, uh, the, the E2000 had a lot of oopsies when it first came out. Uh, this was one of them. Even though it's not an oopsie, it's an oopsie to me. I'd rather have uh, that, that 120 Right? I'd rather have that than that. Um, so th th I look at that as an oopsie. Um, let's see what else there was. Uh, battery chemistry is perfect. Charging, I don't use it. My wife does. Um, I, I don't think I've ever used that because I don't, I don't own anything that, that has wireless charging. I'm not, I, I, it's 50% efficient at best, so I'm not a fan of wireless charging. However, I'm a fan of the simplicity of it. You just set it down. You don't have to plug anything and you don't have to bring a cable. I like that. Um, Let's see what else uh, as far as negativity. I, I really, I can't think of anything, guys. I, I want to be 100% critical all the time. Uh, Pecoron did send this to me free, or s sent it to us free. This is a 100% sponsored review. I didn't pay a, not a penny for this model. So I'm always looking at stuff uh, that could be negative. Uh, the, uh, one thing I can think of right away, when I, when I tip this sideways, uh, guys, don't put your battery sideways. Uh, it, it won't hurt them, but just don't. Um, so always store your batteries upright. So when you look at this, uh, this is a Pecron E2000 sticker. I want to I wanna change this, guys. This is one thing I noticed. If it's the same, I'm going to test it in a second. This is your serial number, guys. And if you scan this with your phone, it goes directly to the page and, and uh, register, probably registration. Who knows? Maybe it's there. Um, but here's one of the problems I noticed with these stickers, guys. And I'm not a fan of this. I want this etched into the plastic or, or you know, like melted into the plastic. You, you know what I mean? Like a stamp that's in the plastic. Because... Let me show you what would happen if somebody was a bad guy. So as you see this, okay, give me one second here. I don't have any fingernails, guys, so I'm trying to struggle here. Um, my fingernails are kind of short. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. Now, guys, you see that? See that? Now, as soon as I get this extra stuff off here, you just kind of rub this like that, and it kind of goes away. See that? 
Now notice that if for some reason it got uh, damp in a, an area that's damp or wet for some reason, notice that this sticker now is useless. You have no way to prove that this is your system because this sticker with the serial number can literally be taken off and you can literally stick it back on. I understand why they did it guys, I do. It's a money saving thing. Uh, but I highly, 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 highly recommend that and anything, especially, I mean, this, when, this, when this came out, guys, this was a $700 box, a little battery box, right? 700 bucks, a lot of money. Anytime you have a piece of technology, I don't care what it is, a microphone, a cable, a cord, anything that's uh, uh, any kind of a money with electronics, I would like to see, personally, I would like to see a serial number put onto the actual unit so you can't just do what I just did and take that off. And I could swap that with another one, right? So uh, I'll, I'll give uh, Petron a prime example of a bad idea. So you have one of these that's out of its warranty, right? And say it died. Say it's, let's, let, let's say it died, right? So you order another of these from Petron, and then you take the, the serial number and you sw switch it to the other ones, right? You do that bad thing, right? And then you send it back. Boom, you get your refund, and now you have a brand new unit, and that will hurt Pecron long term. I'm not giving you the idea of doing that. I'm giving the idea to Pecron to stop people from doing su such things. Um, you know, a company has to make money. I, I understand that. Uh, but you want to stop uh, the bad folks out there because all they do is they hurt all of us guys when when people do things like that it hurts our price when we buy the new stuff because you know that affects the bottom dollar of a company and then they have to make up that money by you know doing other means if you will so I uh, have I, I think that was the only thing that uh, I could say that I didn't like about the system uh, the power pack was a, a, a nice upgrade because it was smaller it was it was uh, um, easier to carry. It came with a very nice pouch and all the cables that you need. I mean, everything from Anderson Powerful to MC4 to um, uh, 12 volt to cigarette light. That's everything you need, guys. I mean, you literally need nothing other than to open this box, turn it on, and use it. Hook it to solar, hook it to your car, hook it wherever the heck you're going to hook it. Um, there's literally, it didn't have any barrels over here output, but usually the item that you would have would have a barrel that you plug in there, and same with the USBs. Um, the, the covers, I think, it would have been nice to have the covers on there now that I think about it. It always looks like these are screaming, like they're going, oh, or something like that. Um, or, or they're, you know, shocked or surprised. But uh, I, 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 I'm really trying, guys. I'm really trying hard. I want to be critical as I can. Um, I, I'm not a, a, what they call a fanboy. Um, I support any product that's good. I don't care who makes it. I don't care what the name is here. This could say XYZ by Rush. It, it, it's irrelevant. I want to have the product that works. Uh, I do, once again, thank Pecron for sending this to me. Uh, I'm honored that my channel, or our channel, guys, our channel is growing like it is, and we're able to get companies to uh, at least notice us because we, in a, it's been only three months, and uh, um, this, this channel has really grown quickly, and we're able to tap into the industry where these companies feel trusted enough to send us stuff uh, free, 100% free of charge to try this, guys, to give you guys an idea of what we think about it. If I didn't like this and I said it was junk, I, I would tell you that. I would 100% tell you that. I am very, very excited to trying this more. Um, obviously, a power station of this size really doesn't affect me. I'm, I, I've gotten very power hungry <laughs> quickly, guys, which everybody will. Uh, 600 watt hours is very good for phones, laptops, stuff like that. Um, portable LED TVs, projectors, things like that that you could use out in the field. Uh, drones, charge your RC batteries, things like that. But as far as really, really running big stuff, that's not what these are intended for anyway. But I'm into running big stuff now. I want longevity. I want battery stuff. If, like, I'll give you a prime example. If, if Pecron would have made a system like this, okay, just, just, just a theory. And on the bottom, maybe they had a... Um, a, uh, you know, like a, you, do you remember the old Dell laptops? You take the bottom and it had a docking bay thing and you click it, right? Imagine if they had uh, a few batteries like that that would go underneath it and you stack them together. Uh, I think there was, uh, I, I think it was Titan. There was a company named Titan, I believe, that makes power stations that you, you click them together, you lock them, and then you hit a button. Um, that would be, imagine a baby one like this sitting next to the E2000 LFP. And then in the future, they have bigger ones and you literally have, a, a, you know, the, uh, the, the 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 daddy the mama and the baby like right right in a row for whatever size you need <clears throat> sorry i talk a lot so i always have to clear my throat okay soda always helps so um i i really i can't i can't find anything that i really dislike guys other than what i mentioned 
uh, the, the, the sticker. I think that's the only thing I dislike, guys, the sticker. And notice that now that corner doesn't want to stay back on because it peels off so easy. I think that's a bad idea. I really do. Um, I, I don't sell anything myself with a serial number on it, but if I did, I would make sure it's etched into the board. Imagine if you had a sticker on your car, and I can go out and peel it off your car and put it on another car. Right. Now, <coughs> like imagine having um, uh, a VIN number on your, on your car. Excuse me. Give me one second, guys. Sorry. All right, that's what happens when you got a motor mouth. You talk a thousand words a minute, and your throat gets dry. Imagine if you had a VIN number on your car. That could just peel off and stick on another car. That, that wouldn't be good, right? So, in conclusion, this is uh, uh, video number one. There'll be more in this series. I'll do lots of live tests and everything with solar and everything. Uh, little refrigerators and all kinds of what have you. And uh, wireless charging and, and USBs. Um, uh, guys, this is a fantastic little box. Uh, I saw it on sale right now for about 350 bucks. Pecoron said that they were going to send a code that's good if you use the link that's in this description and then you get another percentage off. I don't know what the percentage is yet. Um, I'm waiting for them to send me that uh, because I promised that I want to do the review first because if I don't like this, I'm not going to put it on the channel or I'm going to be very, very uh, critical of it and you know tell you what I like and what I don't like first. That's more important. I'm not a salesman. I, I'm not here to sell stuff. I'm here to do my honest review, and then my channel will grow because of that, because of the honesty. Uh, there's a lot of channels out there that just try to sell you stuff, guys. And, man, I just it's frustrating. I, I want to buy something that works. I don't want to buy something that looks cool and sounds cool. I want I want a bottom dollar, five bucks for five bucks a product. Simple. All right, guys. Well, this is my first video, the first review of the Pecoron E600 LF, uh, LFP. Lithium iron phosphate, 614 watt hour battery pack, 1200 watt inverter, awesome. Neat little box, Pecron, good job on this one. I'm very, very uh, excited about this one. I'm pleased with this one. So far, this is a home run, guys, especially for the price. You're looking at almost, almost 60 cents per watt hour. That's a home run in my, for, for those batteries, you know, lithium iron phosphate, 60 cents uh, per watt hour. You can't go wrong with that. All right, guys, Ramblot, be safe. If you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber of this channel. We're growing at, at, at a pretty good rate, and uh, the, the, the views of the channel have just been unbelievable. So, obviously, people like what they're seeing, but they haven't uh, subscribed yet. So, if, you, if you're not a subscriber, get your butt up there and hit that subscriber button. Hit the like button. Let other people know that this information is honest, it's good, it's positive, and you also have a voice. Feel free to leave a comment. If you disagree with anything I say, that's what this is for. This is an online debate forum. I don't censor anything. So if you have something and you don't like it, you say, oh, this button is horrible. Or say it. And, and, and we, can, we can debate that as far as, you know, whether that's a, a fair debate or, you know, kind of a, a, a lenient one where, you know, some people, they just don't like Pecron or they don't like Blue Eddy or they don't like uh, Goal Zero or they don't like Jack Rio. You know, for whatever reason, you know, th those comments are, are usually not helpful. But critical... Uh, opinions are very, very important, to, especially when it comes to, you know, this was 700 bucks, guys. When it first came out, $700. It's a lot of money for a lot of folks. So, all right, guys, ramble on, be safe, and I'll see you again on Rambling Bob Reviews. Bye. <laughs>